Natalie cradled baby Bobby in her arms, her tears flowing freely as she held her son close. The little boy, sensing his mother's embrace, clung to her, his small hands gripping her shirt. I missed you, my son, she said, tears streaming down her face. She could barely get her words out because of how overjoyed she was. You're home now, Bobby. You're home, she murmured. In response, baby Bobby gurgled. His voice mingled with Natalie's sobs. Bryce, still holding Gus down, looked up at the sound of his wife's relieved sobs. The sight of Natalie and Bobby together, safe and sound, filled him with an overwhelming rush of emotions. He stood up, his eyes never leaving the sight of his family reunited. The police officers handcuffed Gus, who was now quietly sobbing, the reality of his actions crashing down upon him. I didn't mean any harm, Gus called out. You don't understand. Bryce, however, was focused solely on his family. He walked over to Natalie and Bobby, his steps hesitant yet eager. As he reached them, Natalie looked up, her eyes meeting Bryce's. Without a word, she extended her arm, offering Bryce the chance to embrace their son. Bryce gently took baby Bobby in his arms, holding him close, feeling the warmth and reality of his son against his chest. Bobby's fingers instantly wrapped around Bryce's, causing his heart to melt. In that moment, all fury, all resentment Bryce had felt was replaced by the pure love he felt for his son. You have no idea how hard we work to bring you home, little one, Bryce murmured. Baby Bobby nestled into Bryce's embrace a sense of safety and familiarity in his father's hold. Bryce closed his eyes, feeling the weight of the world lift from his shoulders. I've got you, Bobby. You're safe now. Bryce whispered, his voice thick with emotion. He kissed the top of Bobby's head, a silent vow of never letting harm come to his son again. Natalie ran her fingers along Bryce's arm. All that work, all that fear, it was worth it for this moment, she murmured. Bryce, holding baby Bobby close, looked over at Natalie, his eyes filled with a mixture of relief and love. Natalie, still wiping away tears, met his gaze, her expression a mirror of his own feelings. Natalie, Bryce said softly, his voice laced with emotion. We did it. We brought him back. He's safe because of us, because of you. Natalie reached out, her hand gently touching Bryce's arm. We did it together, Bryce. She replied, her voice steady despite the tears. I never lost hope, not for a moment, because I knew we would find him. Bryce nodded, his eyes never leaving Natalie's. You were right. Your strength, your belief, it kept me going. It's what brought our boy back to us. Natalie smiled through her tears, a smile of triumph and relief. We're a team, Bryce. In the hardest times, we stand together. That's what makes us strong. That's what makes us a family. Bryce, overcome with emotion, leaned in and kissed Natalie gently on the forehead. You're my rock, Natalie. I don't know what I would do without you. The family stood there in a tight embrace, the police and the woods around them fading in the background. This moment was about them, about the love and bond that had been tested, but never broken. As they eventually pulled apart, Bryce looked at Natalie and then down at Bobby. We did it, Natalie. We brought him home. Just then, their peaceful family moment was broken up by a frightened shout. Hey, you, come back! Came the frantic voice of a police officer. Natalie turned around to see Gus barreling towards them. He lunged towards Bryce, Natalie, and Bobby, his intentions unclear. Bryce, his protective instincts kicking in, swiftly moved, placing himself between Gus and his family. With a swift and determined motion, he tackled Gus to the ground, pinning him with a strength fueled by the need to protect his family. Gus collapsed under Bryce's firm hold, and he began to plead, his voice breaking with emotion. Please, I just, I, I need to say goodbye. That's all I ask, he stammered, tears streaming down his face. Bryce hesitated. Why the hell do you need to say goodbye, he said. Haven't you done enough? Real tears were flowing down Gus's face now. You don't understand. Baby Benny and I, we have a special connection. I really care for him. Bryce knit his brows together, furious. You mean my son, baby Bobby, he corrected Gus. In the middle of all the commotion, Bobby began to cry. Natalie rocked him back and forth. It's okay, little one, she murmured. It was then that Officer Stern approached them. Well, what do we have here? He smirked. The foul criminal Gus Shackleton. His voice was condescending and mocking, 
I'm not a criminal, Gus called out. You're all mistaken. Officer Stern cut him off with a smirk. Huh, what's the matter, Bryce? Having trouble with your little friend here? Bryce tightened his grip around Gus. He says he wants to say something to Bobby. Stern laughed derisively. Goodbye! To a kid you kidnapped! Ha, you've got some nerve, Shackleton! Gus, still beneath Bryce, protested weakly. I'm not what you think. I'm not even a threat right now. Just then, without a word of warning, Officer Stern delivered a swift kick in the gut to Gus, who was already subdued and helpless on the ground. The action was brutal and unnecessary, and it elicited gasps from the onlookers. Natalie clutched Bobby closer, her eyes wide with shock at the sudden violence. She covered Bobby's face with her hand. Oh, Bobby, she murmured. Stop, please, stop, came Gus's frightened plea. At the sound of Gus's voice, Bobby's eyes widened. Then he began to cry. Stop, Bryce yelled, turning his gaze sharply towards Officer Stern. That's enough, he's already down. Gus, writhing in pain, continued to sob. Bryce and Natalie exchanged a look. Despite everything Gus had done, the raw human pain he displayed was undeniable. Let him, Natalie whispered, her voice barely audible. Just for a moment, Bryce, then it's over. Bryce nodded slowly, his grip on Gus loosening slightly. He allowed Gus to sit up, but remained vigilant, ready to intervene at any sign of danger. Gus, now sitting, looked toward baby Bobby with a gaze full of sorrow and regret. As Gus watched the little boy, his eyes welled up with tears. Goodbye, little one, he whispered, his voice breaking. I'm so sorry. In a moment of unexpected tenderness, baby Bobby, still in Natalie's arms, reached out a tiny hand, his little finger wrapped around one of Gus's fingers. Gus's expression softened, his eyes glistening with tears. Uh, I can't believe you did that, he murmured. For a brief moment, his tough exterior melted away, revealing a man who had lost everything and in his grief made choices he couldn't take back. Bryce froze, despite the anger and the hurt. Seeing Gus's reaction to Bobby's touch made him wonder about the man's story, about the depth of pain and loss that must have driven him to such desperate actions. Natalie held Bobby a little closer, too. As Gus gently withdrew his hand, a silent tear rolled down his cheek. I never meant to hurt anyone, he said, almost to himself. The moment passed, and the officers moved in to take Gus away. As he stood up, Gus cast one last look at Bobby. Goodbye, Bobby, he whispered. Bobby's cries grew louder as Gus was led away by the police, his tiny face crumpled in a mix of confusion and distress. Jill, Devin, and Tony approached the family, their expressions a blend of relief and satisfaction. Natalie, still holding Bobby, turned to them with a weary but grateful smile. Jill stepped forward first, her eyes softening as she looked at Bobby. Hey there, little man, she said gently. You had us all worried, but you're safe now. That's what matters. Tony knelt down to be at eye level with Bobby, his famous smile warm and genuine. I'm just glad you're back where you belong, he said, his tone affectionate. Devin, standing a bit awkwardly to the side, moved closer and waved at Bobby. I'm not great with kids, but I'm really happy to see you safe, Bobby. He admitted, a sincere smile on his face. Doug, who had been a constant presence throughout the search, approached and gently ruffled Bobby's hair. You're one little tough guy, Bobby. Glad to see you're okay, he said, his voice filled with a fatherly warmth. Bobby, still in Natalie's arms, looked around at each face. He then broke into a toothless grin. Natalie, watching this, felt a surge of gratitude for each person who had played a role in bringing her son home. Thank you, everyone. She said, her voice choked with emotion. Bobby may not understand it now, but he's surrounded by people who care deeply for him. That's a gift. Doug nodded. Absolutely. And we could not have brought Bobby home without the help of each and every person here. Natalie smiled. Jill, Tony, Devin, you did an amazing job out there. She said, her voice tinged with gratitude. Your role in this, it was crucial. We couldn't have done it without you. Bryce nodded in agreement. Absolutely. Your work as the fake location scout was vital. It gave us the opening we needed to ensure Bobby's safe return. Jill, a hint of pride in her eyes, replied, We were just happy to help, Natalie. Seeing Bobby back in your arms is all the things we need. Tony, glancing down at Bobby, added, It was the least we could do. 
After all the turmoil, it's good to see him safe with you. Devin, usually reserved, couldn't hide his relief. It feels like we've been a part of a real-life drama, but the best part is the happy ending. Bobby, sensing the warmth and safety of his mother's arms, slowly calmed down. Natalie looked around at the faces of those who had helped her bring her son home, her heart full of gratitude. Thank you. All of you, she said, her voice strong despite the tears in her eyes. You've helped bring our family back together. Bryce turned to Natalie, his eyes filled with love and admiration. He leaned in and gently kissed her. I love you, he whispered. The others watched this exchange, smiles on their faces. It was more than just a personal victory for Bryce and Natalie. It was a victory for everyone who had come together in the name of love and family. Bryce then looked down at Bobby, who was now looking around with curious, innocent eyes. He turned back to Natalie, his voice filled with a hopeful note. Are you ready to bring Bobby home? Natalie nodded, her eyes shining with tears of joy. Yes, let's go home. As Bryce, Natalie, and baby Bobby entered their home, the atmosphere was filled with a mixture of relief and joy. Mrs. Perkins, Liam, and Robert Clare were waiting eagerly, their faces lighting up the sight of the little boy they had all missed so much. Mrs. Perkins' eyes were brimming with tears as she looked at Bobby. Oh, my dear boy, she exclaimed, reaching out to gently stroke his cheek. We've all been so worried. Welcome home. Liam bounded forward. Bobby! He cried out, beaming with happiness. You're back! I missed you so much! His voice was filled with relief and love as he hugged his little brother. Natalie and Bryce watched the moment with adoring eyes. Don't they look adorable? Natalie asked. Bryce smiled. They do, he said. Let's hope Liam and Bobby both grow up to understand the importance of family. Robert Clare stood a little back, his eyes moist with unshed tears. He watched the family reunion, his heart swelling with pride. You both look great together, he said to Bryce and Natalie, his voice thick with emotion. Bringing Bobby back, you've done something extraordinary. Bryce, holding Bobby close, looked around at his family. I'm just relieved it's over, he said, his voice reflecting the exhaustion of the past days. Natalie, however, had a thoughtful look in her eyes as she held Bobby in her arms. She glanced at Bryce, and then at her family gathered around. It's not over, she said softly. This, this is a new chapter, a new beginning for us. Bryce smiled. You're right, he said. Then Mrs. Perkins lifted Bobby up and smelled him. Oh, no, she said. You need a bath. Bryce and Natalie laughed. Their tension was momentarily forgotten. Mrs. Perkins looked at the happy couple and smiled. I can take him. Natalie smiled. Are you sure? She asked. Of course, Mrs. Perkins said. It's been a long night. Take the time to de-stress. As Mrs. Perkins, with Bobby in her arms, began to leave the room, Liam eagerly followed. Can I come too? He asked, his eyes shining with the excitement of having his little brother back. Mrs. Perkins smiled warmly at him. Of course, dear. Robert joined them, his presence a comforting addition to the small group. The trio left the room to tend to the little boy's needs, leaving Bryce and Natalie alone. Once the room was quieter, Bryce turned to Natalie, his expression serious. Natalie, we need to talk, he said, his voice carrying an urgency that caught Natalie's attention. What is it, Bryce? What's wrong? Natalie asked, her brows furrowing in worry. Bryce hesitated for a moment, gathering his thoughts. It's about Shackleton. I've been thinking, and I don't believe he intended any harm to Bobby. He finally said, his eyes searching Natalie's for understanding. Natalie looked taken aback. But after everything he's done, how can you believe that? She asked, her voice laced with uncertainty. Bryce sighed, choosing his words carefully. I know it's hard to understand, especially after all the fear and pain we've been through. But when I saw Shackleton with Bobby, there was a moment. It wasn't just about a kidnapper and his victim. It was more personal, more painful. Natalie looked at him, trying to make sense of his perspective. You mean you think he genuinely cared for Bobby? Bryce nodded slowly. I think Shackleton was lost in his grief. The way he reacted when Bobby reached out to him. The sorrow in his eyes. It doesn't excuse what he did. But it makes me wonder if there's a part of his story we haven't fully understood. Natalie's expression softened as she considered Bryce's words. 
It's hard for me to feel sympathy for him after what he's put us through. But if what you're saying is true, then maybe. Natalie softened her gaze and held Bryce's hand. I don't know what would happen if I lost any of you either, she reflected. Bryce's expression then turned grave. There's something else that doesn't sit right with me, he said, his voice tinged with concern. Do you know who currently has custody of Gus Shackleton? Natalie shook her head. I'm not sure. We should ask Doug. He would know. Just then, Doug entered the room, his eyes alert. Ask me what? He inquired, sensing the serious tone of the conversation. Bryce didn't waste a moment. Doug, who's watching over Gus Shackleton right now? He asked, his voice urgent. Doug's expression changed as he understood the gravity of Bryce's question. Officer Ralph Stern is in charge of his custody, he replied, his voice neutral. Bryce's face paled at the mention of Stern's name. Stern? Ralph Stern? He asked, his voice rising with alarm. Well, that's not good. Natalie's eyes widened in surprise and concern. The one who wasn't helpful at all during our search for Bobby? Bryce added, the very same one that kicked Shackleton while he was down, he said. Doug frowned. Are you serious? That could be a problem, he said, his mind racing with the implications. Bryce paced the room, his mind working rapidly. We need to make sure Gus is being treated fairly. If Stern is as corrupt as I believe, who knows what he might do to Gus, especially now that the case is high profile. Natalie sighed. What do we do now? She asked. Bryce's steps were purposeful as he made his decision. I'm going to the police station myself, he declared. Natalie reached out, touching his arm. Bryce, are you sure that's a good idea? What if you run into Stern? Bryce turned to her, his resolve unwavering. That's exactly who I want to run into. If Stern is treating Gus unfairly, we need to know and take action. This is about ensuring justice is served properly for everyone involved. Doug, understanding the gravity of the situation, nodded in agreement. I'll come with you. It's better to have someone by your side in case things get heated. Bryce appreciated Doug's support. Thanks, Doug. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, but it's good to have backup. Natalie looked worried, but knew arguing would be futile. Be careful, both of you, she said, her voice laced with concern. Bryce and Doug headed out the door and towards the police station. Shackleton had kidnapped Bobby. He was by no means a good person, but the justice officer Stern was about to serve him was far from fair. Bryce, with Doug at his side, stormed into the police station. His demeanor was one of a man on a mission. As he approached the front desk, his voice was firm. I need to see Officer Ralph Stern, now. The officer at the desk, a young man with a look of unwavering loyalty, stood firm. I'm sorry, Mr. Clare, but I can't let you do that. Officer Stern is busy. Bryce's frustration mounted. This is important. It concerns the fair treatment of a suspect in custody. I insist on seeing him. The young officer, clearly a staunch supporter of Stern, hesitated. He was torn between his duty and the intimidating presence of Bryce. I can't, sir. Officer Stern is in an interrogation right now. Bryce leaned in closer, his voice rising with urgency. Listen to me. What Stern is doing in there could have serious implications. I need to know if he's handling the situation with Gus Shackleton appropriately. Doug, watching the exchange, added, we're talking about a man's rights here. We need to ensure there's no misconduct. The young officer, visibly conflicted, finally caved under the pressure. Fine. Officer Stern is in the interrogation room, he admitted reluctantly. Bryce and Doug exchanged a quick glance, a silent acknowledgement of their next move. Thank you, Bryce said sharply, before heading toward the interrogation room. Doug followed closely, ready to back Bryce up in whatever was about to unfold. As Bryce and Doug approached the interrogation room, they found themselves in front of a two-way mirror. From their vantage point, they could see into the room without being seen. Officer Ralph Stern was visible, sitting across from Gus Shackleton, who looked worn and anxious. The questions Stern asked were far from standard police procedure. They were personal, intrusive, and seemingly irrelevant to the case at hand. Stern leaned forward, his eyes fixed intently on Gus. So, Shackleton, tell me about your childhood. Any traumatic experiences we should know about? Stern's voice came out condescending and biting. Gus, looking bewildered, replied hesitantly, I... I don't see how that's relevant to what happened. Stern smirked. Everything about you is relevant. We're trying to understand the man who took a child. Your past, your fears, your failures, it all matters. Bryce, watching this exchange, felt a surge of anger. He's not even asking about Bobby. He whispered to Doug, his voice a mix of disbelief and fury. Gus shifted uncomfortably in his chair. Look, I've made mistakes, but I never intended to harm the boy. 
he stammered, his eyes downcast. Stern leaned back in his chair, his demeanor one of mock contemplation. Mistakes, huh? Is that what you call kidnapping a child? Just a little oopsie? The sarcasm in his voice was biting. Gus's face flushed with a mix of shame and frustration. It wasn't like that. I was just trying to. Stern cut him off. Trying to what? Playhouse? Relive the good old days with a replacement for your dead kid? Bryce's jaw clenched as he listened. These questions, they do nothing to help Bobby's case. He whispered to Doug, his voice laced with anger and disbelief. Doug, equally disturbed, nodded in agreement. It's like he's trying to break him down, not to get to the truth. This isn't right. Gus, visibly struggling under the pressure of Stern's interrogation, tried to answer the questions, but his responses were hesitant and fraught with confusion. This isn't an interrogation. It's an intimidation tactic. Bryce muttered, his fists clenched in frustration. Stern's not looking for answers. He's playing some kind of twisted power game. Just then, Officer Stern slammed his fist onto the table, barely missing Gus's body for another brutal punch. Doug's mouth widened in surprise. We have to do something, he began. But it was already too late. Bryce marched towards the door of the interrogation room and pushed it open. His patience had worn thin. Bryce grabbed Stern by the shoulder, pulling him away from Gus with a force that showed his contempt. Enough, Stern, he barked, his voice a mixture of fury and disgust. This isn't how we do things. You're way out of line. Stern, caught off guard by Bryce's intervention, tried to shug it off with a sneer. What? Can't handle a little tough questioning? He retorted, attempting to maintain his front of control. Bryce gritted his teeth. This wasn't just tough questioning, and we both know it. Stern looked at Bryce, almost mocking. What? And what would you do about it? Just then, Doug stepped forward. I witnessed everything, he said, phone camera in his hand. Stern's confident demeanor crumbled as he realized the gravity of the situation. The presence of a witness, especially with recorded evidence, was a game changer. He glanced at Bryce, his sneer replaced by a look of reluctant concession. All right, all right, Stern muttered, his voice now lacking its previous authority. I, I got carried away. Sorry, Bryce. It was clear from his tone that the apology was more out of necessity than genuine remorse. With one last wary glance at Doug in his phone, Stern turned and left the room. In the now silent room, Gus, who had been pushed to the brink, broke down. Thank you. He managed to choke out between sobs, his voice barely audible. Oh, thank you, Bryce. Bryce looked at Gus. I did what was right. He said quietly, Not everything is forgiven, Gus. There's a lot you need to answer for. But this, this wasn't the way to get those answers. He placed a hand on Gus's shoulder, a gesture that was more about offering support than comfort. Take this time to think about everything. Think hard about your choices and what you need to do next. As Bryce turned to leave the room, he was torn. He saw a more human side to Gus today, something he hadn't expected to see. He was conflicted by Gus's treatment, but for now, he had to return to his family. That always came first. <laughs>